the year is nearly over, and so it's time to run through what we thought were the best racing games released over the past 12 months. And that's tricky, because while it was a stellar year where the genre made huge strides forward, this was arguably mainly down to continued support and downloadable content for existing platforms. No bad thing, but this ever-encroaching live service business model does mean fewer individual releases. Still, there were a number of gems released this year that Traction.gg will no doubt be covering for the years to come. Here are five games, in no particular order, that we loved this year, that were launched in that same time window and were neither updates to or ports of existing releases. In simple terms, the best racing games that were released in 2022. Just before we crack on with the main list, there were plenty of good games that didn't quite make the final five, largely because they were iterative versions of long-established playbooks that didn't necessarily innovate. Take EA Sports F122 for example. Yes, there was a new, somewhat divisive handling model to match the fresh rule set, but it also added in superfluous road-going supercars instead of refining more important areas. WRC Generations still suffers from dowdy visuals, lacklustre engine sounds, and the new Hybrid Rally 1 cars are heavier, thus more cumbersome to drive. Still, the new Leagues mode is engrossing, and with a wheel peripheral on the Swedish stages, one of the best rally handling models ever to exist. Another notable yearly sports release was Monster Energy Supercross 5, which was the biggest step forward to the dirt bike series in several years in terms of features, but not a revolution. MotoGP 22, on the other hand, offered a superb 2008 season-based documentary, but a lack of on-track refinements elsewhere. On the not-so-serious side of the racing game spectrum, Grid Legends delivered the automotive equivalent of a bag of Skittles. Sweet, brightly coloured, and variety rich, but large swathes of its on-track content has been repurposed over multiple generations by now. If this was 2011, we'd be all over it. Elsewhere, existing top-tier experiences made their way to different places. Our favourite top-down dirt title, Rush Rally Origins, made it onto PC and Xbox, Circuit Superstars onto PlayStation, and after several months of patches and DLC, Assetto Corsa Competizione finally delivered the most serious driving experience on console. The Nintendo Switch and mobile versions of Wreckfest and current console upgrade of Inertial Drift wowed us too, however, they don't count as all new releases. Neither did the Race in USA content for Automobilista 2, the BMW LMDH for iRacing, Trucks for Race Room, British Touring Car Championship content for R Factor 2, or Booster Course Pass for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. All excellent, all DLC for existing platforms. Right, on with the main list, and we'd like to know your favourite. Visit the Traction.gg website, link in the description, and you can vote for our overall Game of the Year. Picking more than four racing games this year was a quandary. Several of the honourable mentions could have made the final cut, and for the first all-new Need for Speed in three years, the omens weren't looking good. Development was paused in 2021, so Criterion Games could help finish Battlefield 2042. Then, when it resumed, the team needed to adjust to Codemaster's Cheshire outfit becoming part of the project. There were no reviews before the game's $80 Palace Edition went on sale either, while a cartoon-like visual style divided opinion. Despite these hurdles, Unbound heralded a return to form for the open-world driving game in general, outside of Forza Horizon. Electronic Arts and the industry needed this to succeed, and we think for the most part it did. Some of the car customization options are unprecedented, and it's these visual upgrades that hold the experience together. ASAP Rocky's appearance and the story itself are neither here nor there, the first few hours quite restrictive and the baseline gameplay experience not particularly groundbreaking. But once you're used to the day cycle gameplay loop and upgraded your vehicles enough to shake the cops, you realise there's a thoughtful progression to proceedings, insane jumps, eye-watering top speeds, and incredible visuals to boot when using a PS5 or Xbox Series X. Yes, a mobile game. And not just that, one that is part of a business model that is incredibly infuriating. Apple Arcade is a subscription service that you probably have by accident by purchasing a new iOS device of late. But, unlike other services like Xbox Game Pass or PlayStation Plus, these games aren't available to purchase separately, even on the App Store. So, when the sequel to one of our favourite retro arcade racing games, remember the Ayrton Senna DLC for Horizon Chase Turbo last year, went straight behind the Apple subwall, it was a handbrake turned straight to the guts. It retains its forebearer's handling fluency, but layers in more advanced online multiplayer, turns up the vibrancy of the colour palette, and allows the track designers to run wild. This is a prime example of the arcade racer reviving 80s gaming sensibilities beautifully and offering a joyous, simple experience anyone could enjoy, said Justin Towell in our review on the Traction.gg website. 
Mercifully, Horizon Chase 2 is headed to more devices, including PC and console, at some point in 2023. Thank goodness for that, the wait will be worth it. When you've started your third season in F1 Manager 2022, the car development seems to lack the required depth, the AI decisions seem to be determined by someone who's never watched a Formula 1 race, and the driver market makes less sense than Tyson Fury. Come on though, not bad for Frontier Development's first effort in a racing management series, let alone inaugural foray into motorsport. Why this title makes this list is very simple, it provokes emotions. That first time you micromanage a young driver into a points paying position for Haas, only for them to throw it off the road with a handful of laps remaining, is rage inducing. Gaming, like other forms of entertainment such as films or TV shows, are created to generate feelings, sadness, anger, relief and happiness. One season of controlling Williams in this title will see you run the full gamut of sentiment. Technically, dig deeper and this isn't the perfect management sim. Yet, it's capable of being the most intense single-player motorsport title you'll play this year. Apparently, it doesn't rain in America, the online lobbies are still unstable, the in-game currency model raised serious questions, and once you finish the cafe menu books, there perhaps isn't enough incentive for many to go back. But, but, that dynamic weather system is truly genre-leading. Regardless of platform, there isn't a more accessible sim-ish handling model in gaming, and the real-world track recreations are cut above. These core abilities matter, while the rest of the experience can be built upon and refined. The essentials are in place, before we mention the ranked online sport mode, a car collecting draw, or free monthly upgrades. Ignore the needless fripperies such as music rally and meeting places, and focus on the driving. It's clear this isn't going to be as fondly remembered as some of its precursors, but Gran Turismo 7 is also a continually updated platform that will continue to evolve over the years to come, and we can't wait to see what comes next. On the face of it, PC simulation subscription service iRacing's console debut was up against it. Developer Monster Games has previously produced the solid, if unspectacular, Tony Stewart and SRX games, and on the run-up to launch, World of Outlaws Dirt Racing simply looked like yet another rehash. But the Massachusetts-based Chiefs saw something we clearly didn't when they purchased the team at the start of the year, and its potential has finally been realised. Straight up, this game will not be for everyone. Dirt Oval Racing is a niche within a niche, within a North American niche. Its representation of the sport is unabashed. The decision was also made to spin off some of the licensed tracks into paid DLC. Try to imagine a Formula 1 game doing that, and its online system is as basic and as barren as it comes. Yet, this game blew us away. One of the best games of the year and the single most surprising. There's nuance in the vehicle handling, not just across the multiple different classes, but across varying surface types. Running a high line or a low line is possible, and both will work when the time is right. The biggest shock is a single-player career that delivers arguably the most depth of any driving title released this year. Take note, Polyphony Digital. And that's it. In our opinion, the five best racing games of 2022, and some honourable mentions. The big question remains, which do you think deserves the number one spot? Make sure you head over to the Traction.gg website and cast your vote. That's it from us today, but before I go, why not consider subscribing to the Traction channel if you haven't already? If you love racing games, then you are in the right place, and the Traction.gg website has all of your latest news, reviews, and features on all things racing games, hardware, and esports. Until next time, thank you so much for watching, keep it pinned, and have a great day.